The Youth's Instructor, November 17, 1892 Words to the Young How much owest thou unto my Lord? The Lord has given to the youth capabilities and talents with which they are to do the work of God. I ask you, dear youth, are you going to give yourselves to the Lord? Are you ready to engage in the work He has left you to do? Jesus said to His disciples, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. In the face of this command, will you appropriate your time and your energies, as inclination may dictate, instead of following the counsel of God? Will you choose your own independent judgment, and walk in the sparks of your own kindling, instead of following the light of the world? Years are rapidly passing away, and at any time disease may lay its relentless grasp upon you, and, all too late, you may see that you have made a terrible mistake. Satan is constantly telling the youth that, in living for the world, great rewards will be received in this life. But this is not so. The brightest expectations of this life will never be realized. Where is your reward? Can you look up and by faith see the crown awaiting you in heaven? Do you rejoice in the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for those who love Him? If you follow the path of your own choosing, your ruin will lie at your own door. No second probation can be granted to those who do not appreciate the privileges bought at an infinite price. If you are laying up treasure on earth, stop and estimate the value of the lifetime in which you are walking directly contrary to the will of God, misapplying your talents, and bringing no interest to your master. Reckon up the years in which you have refused to accept God's way, refused to put out your talents to the exchangers as He has directed. Reckon up the increase that might have been gained by a wise use of the Lord's goods, and answer the question, How much owest thou unto my Lord? Is it not time, dear youth, who have been wasting your Lord's goods, to consider what will be the end of a misspent life? What will be the terrible reckoning you will have to meet in the judgment, if by your words and actions you persist in saying, I will not have this man, Christ Jesus, to rule over me. I will follow my own inclination and do my own will. Will you who have hearts to feel let this matter have weight with you before it is everlastingly too late? Will you who have eyes to see discern whither your feet are tending? Will you who have ears to hear open them to listen to the counsel of the Most High? there are souls to be saved. But in wasting your talent of influence, you cannot be laborers together with God, working for the salvation of others. God would have you rightfully direct every jot of influence you possess. He calls for you to whom He has given great light to cooperate with heavenly intelligences. Those who have great light and precious capabilities will have a large field in which their influence may tell unto life eternal. But if those who have been richly endowed of heaven withhold their gifts from God's service and misapply them in the service of self and the world, they will be punished in proportion to the light which they have persistently refused. God has made the youth the depositaries of the truth that is to be imparted to the world. Will you not now repent? Will you not now fall on the rock, Christ Jesus, and be broken? Will you not seek the Lord while He is near, and call upon Him while He may be found? He says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and He will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon.
Christ is calling for wholehearted, sincere servants who will not be turned from their position of duty by allurements or opposition, who will not fail or be discouraged. Will you give him your names? Will you be among those who shall be light bearers? Will you give yourself to him to be employed as his agents, to arrest the steps of many who are going on the road to perdition? Oh, if we all had the Spirit of our Savior, what self-denial would be manifested, what uprooting of selfishness, what binding about of wants to save means to assist in the salvation of souls. How earnest would be our efforts that Christ might abide in the heart, that we might exert a heavenly influence upon those with whom we associate. How careful we should be that no word of unbelief, of jesting and joking, of lightness and trifling, should encourage one soul to be indifferent and unconcerned in regard to the future eternal interest. My heart is in deep sorrow, for I know that the age in which we live is not conducive to godliness. We have pleaded that the youth might be clothed with the beautiful garments of Christ's righteousness, that they might work with all their God-given ability to rescue souls that are perishing. Dear youth, we appeal to you to pray to God that you may be converted and show by your actions that you love Jesus and carry a burden for the souls for whom Christ has died. Pray that the Holy Spirit may be poured upon you, that you may see afar off and take in the significance of the plan of salvation. Pray that the sanctifying influence may come upon you, that the presence of Christ may abide with you. For Jesus has said, Without me ye can do nothing.' 